I'm Rachel. You're now at Jeunesse Pier on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Of course, we're a fishing pier, but we're also part of North Carolina Aquariums. And today, you're gonna to be watching some of our virtual programs so you can learn wherever you are. This lesson's gonna look at plankton. First, I'm gonna teach you all about it. Then we're gonna go out onto the pier and collect some, and then we'll take a look at what we can find. So what exactly is plankton? Most plankton are very small. This is typically what most kids already know about plankton, just like plankton from the SpongeBob show. Most plankton are so tiny that you can't even see them. We're gonna use this device here called a microscope when we check them out so that we can see everything nice and clear. However, not all plankton are super small. We have this giant exception right here, a jellyfish. We don't need a microscope to see a jellyfish. We can see them with our eyes but they are still considered plankton. The biggest difference between plankton and other organisms in the ocean is that they don't have the ability to swim. Planktonic means to drift, so like our jellyfish and these little tiny microscopic plankton, they're just gonna be going wherever the water takes them. Nectonic is the opposite. Our fish, our sharks, our turtles, our crabs, all of these animals, are going to be able to swim wherever they want. They have those muscles and those fins to take them where the waves aren't going. We have two main types of plankton, phytoplankton over here and zooplankton over here. Most people recognize this word zoo because you see lots of animals at the zoo. That's exactly what the zooplankton is, our animal plankton. You kind of see they do resemble animals just a little bit, kind of like bugs. Phytoplankton is the opposite of an animal, they're plants. So every time you see a geometric shape like a circle, maybe like these triangles or any lines of any sort, those are typically our plant plankton. There's two main types of those plant planktons. We have dinoflagellates and we have diatoms. Dinoflagellates have that evil quality like the plankton from SpongeBob sometimes. They can cause harmful blooms like bioluminescence and red tide events. Um, it's not necessarily bad for us, but it can be bad for shellfish, so bad for other creatures in the ocean. But these ones have flagella that are like little tails that can propel them through the water just a little bit. But remember, they can't swim on their own, only when it's super, super still water. Diatoms are the other main type of phytoplankton. They kind of resemble stained glass, so they will have little segments. They can be individuals or they can be all linked up into a chain. There's also two main types of zooplankton, which again, that's our animal plankton. We have meroplankton over here, holoplankton over here. Meroplankton typically resembles an animal that we are familiar with, such as this one, the crab. This one is going to turn into a sea snail, and this one is just a smaller crab, or it kind of looks like a shrimp. These animals can all move when they're in their adult form. So for example, a crab, if it has a predator coming its way, it can just swim the opposite direction or walk the opposite direction. So these guys are only going to be plankton for part of their life. As they get older, they are able to swim on their own, and they don't have to rely just on drifting anymore. Holoplankton is the opposite. These guys have to be plankton their whole life. So they're never gonna get bigger or stronger. They're always just gonna be drifting in the waves. So how important is plankton? I'm not sure how well you can see this, but it's an airplane view of plankton. And it's kind of just like green swirls in the water is typically what it will look like. Plankton gives us a lot of oxygen, just like any plants, like trees, grass, or flowers, they're producing oxygen for us to breathe. Over half of the oxygen on the entire earth comes from these teeny tiny plants that are floating around in the ocean. The second thing that is really great about these plankton is that they are part of the food chain. They're going to feed lots and lots of animals in the ocean, and then when we eat seafood, we are also getting that nutrition thanks to these plankton that are in the ocean. So now we're going to study these plankton and we're going to take a net. We're going to head out onto the pier and we're going to see what we can catch. All right, so now we're out on Jeanette's pier. We're going to lower our plankton net down and see what kind of plankton we can catch. 
All I have is a very long rope attached to my net. The net is made of a thin mesh so that water can escape but the plankton get trapped inside. I'm going to leave this at the top of the water just for a few minutes. The plankton like it at the top because there's sunlight and they need that sunlight to survive. So let's drop it over and see what we can catch. So here I have my bottle of plankton. Looks kind of just like normal water to me unless I get really close then I can see little bits of things floating around in there. The only way to find out what we caught is to take it back in the classroom and look under the microscope. Okay so now that we have our plankton sample we're going to put it under our microscope so that we can take a look at what we got. I'm going to do this by using a pipette. So this works by squeezing the air out of the bulb sticking it into our sample and then releasing the bulb so it sucks up some of our sample. Next, I'm going to use a slide, which is just a little piece of glass, and I'll gently drop about five drops onto my slide, and then this is what goes in the microscope so we can take a look. Okay, so now I have my slide underneath my microscope. I'm just gonna turn it on. It's a nice little TV screen so you guys can see what's going on. I have my knobs over here to the side that help me zoom in and out or focus. And then I have these knobs that help me look left and right. So it's very user friendly. Just gonna look around. I also have these guides as I go that's gonna help me identify what I see. So I have one guide for phytoplankton, which are the plants. And then I have another guide for my zooplankton, which are those animal planktons. So I'm just gonna scroll down because I think there's something down here and there is. So focus it so you guys can see it. This one's actually too big to see all at once. So I'll kind of move around as I go. So this one, you can tell it's very large. Crazy that this is in just one drop of water. And you can see it kind of has little like furry feet, kind of like how bugs have feet like that. Tarantulas have those hairy legs, kind of the same concept. One here is cooperating nicely. Sometimes these animal plankton will be swimming around, so you kind of have to chase them a little bit. This one seems to be just hanging out. He's on his side, so he's a little bit hard to tell what he is, but I do believe that he is this adult copepod right here. So let's scroll around a little bit more, see what else we can find. A couple different things we can check out. Here's something here. Let me focus. You can see all these pieces. This one's probably another animal. Usually the larger ones are the animals. They can sometimes be swimming around and the smaller ones typically are the plant plankton or those phytoplankton. Now remember as I said before, usually the ones with geometrical shapes, like this one is a line, or if we ever come across one that's a circle, those ones are typically the plants. We have lots of lines in this area, lots of phytoplankton in this sample. And as I keep going, we're seeing lots of exoskeletons as well. Just like a snake will shed its skin, the plankton do the same thing. Oh, here's cool ones right here. Lots of plankton in this sample. So you can see just because it was a few drops of water didn't really look like anything to us with our eyeballs. We can see that there's actually lots of living stuff in here. All this stuff is going to help keep our oceans alive, provide food for lots of different organisms, and those plant plankton make a lot of oxygen that help us survive. So thanks for joining me today, learning about plankton and what we can find in such a tiny drop of water. See you next time.